Well, you never do. I mean, you owned all this, but then they were like, that's right. So what do you own? You own the body you're in perhaps, but then they forced you to get a vaccine. So maybe you don't own that anymore. You own your soul. You can own your thoughts, but then that belongs to God. So then what do you even own now on this planet? Because I have people say to me all the time, oh, I'd love to buy a house. I own my house. You don't own that house. You have to pay property taxes every month. And if you don't pay them, they'll take it off you. You're renting it from the government. D- piss the government off and you'll see how long you own your house. Because I tell you what's going to happen. They're going to turn up with a piece of paper and say it's ours. Done. Happened to me. So you never even own anything on this earth, no matter how much money you have, right? Which also puts money in perspective. All it is is the time and energy of other people. It's all it's good for. You can buy a Bugatti, but you don't own that Bugatti. You can drive it a bit if they let you. And piss the matrix off enough, they'll take that off you too. So the whole world, if you actually start analyzing how it all works, it's interesting. But yeah, my concerns in jail were for absolutely everybody else. And that's perhaps why I'm gearing up for war so heavily, because I believe that this war can't be avoided. And a lot of people ask me, why with my money do I not do one of two things, which is one vanish, because I could just delete everything and shut up, right? I could just go away. But that's not you. That's not me. And, and I think that God would be disappointed in me. So I think God's given me this platform to tell the truth. So I'm going to do it. Or the second thing is I could sell out to the system. I could cut. also not you. It's not me. I could sell to the system, say what they want me to say, promote the things they want me to promote, sell shit to kids, be a piece of shit, but then, and then they'll let me live. But then you just remove the only thing that you do own, and it's your soul. Absolutely. And, and, and you don't want them to take that away No, you. no, exactly. I need to keep something. Yeah. So it ain't worth giving that up for a bit more money, because I have unlimited money anyway. Yeah, but plus, every time you swipe that card when you're gone, you're like, fuck my life, dog. This is anything. Oh, completely. <laughs> what do you have? If you, don't, if you don't look in the mirror and be like, yeah, I did the right thing, then what do you even have? Oh, boom. Not pride, but integrity. Okay. Well, we could link the two. You look in the mirror and be proud of yourself. But it's, it's interesting. No, but it's interesting the points you've made. It's given me something to think about. It's certainly true. But... That's why I'm gearing up for war so heavily because this war, when people ask me why I don't try and avoid it in the two ways we just described, I don't think most people understand that this war is coming for everyone. It can't be avoided. You're either going to become someone like me who's fighting against it, the counterculture, or you're going to buy into it and be a victim of it. I don't think any man who wakes up and accepts the garbage that the matrix tells them that, yeah, it's okay to be depressed. Like we just talked about, yeah, you should be running around doing perkies and Adderall and consuming porn and sleeping with a bunch of hoes and yeah, go to school and get education and get in debt and then go get a mortgage and get in debt and then nine to five and just slave away and you'll be retired when you're 74. It's going to be fine. All the things they push, all the standardized mechanisms that a man's supposed to live his life by. I believe lead to crippling depression and sadness anyway. I don't think that makes anyone happy. So this war is twofold. You can either fight against the system and be its enemy like I am, or you can accept the system and then you're going to be fighting against yourself in your head because now you're your own enemy because you've listened to the system and you hate yourself and you hate your life. So what do you want to do? If you can't avoid fighting, do you want to turn on yourself or do you want to turn on your enemy? Every single part of me is on my team. My mind, my hands, my feet, everything, my teeth, you name it. If it goes to war, I've got every single weapon at my disposal. So when people say to me, why am I fighting this war? I say, you're in the war too. You're just going to be a casualty of it. You're going to be a forgotten name. Not even a name. You're going to be a number. In wars, it's interesting. In wars, if you look at any war, they'll talk about 12,000 people died here. And one of them was this guy. There's names and there's numbers. So if you're going to go to war, you can decide, do you want to be a name or a number? Because people are going to die. People are going to die regardless. And this is why I teach the things I teach. I say to men, listen, you need to become as strong as possible. You need to make a bunch of money. You need to prepare. You need to have seven passports in seven different countries. And you just start sitting there getting paranoid and panicking and getting things done. This is why I push masculine excellence. Because when they come for you, when they come for us all, if you have no weapons to defend yourself, you're going to be one of the 12,000 in the ditch. At At least when they kill me, they know who they killed. At least they'll say they killed 12,000 men and Andrew Tate. Yeah. At least I get that. You have to aim for something. But this war can't be avoided, and everyone at home doesn't seem to realize Here's that. the thing that, like, I'm going to put you a little bit at ease and scare you at the same time. I'm ready. They killed Jesus, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, they killed God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, he wanted it to happen. Thank yeah. God he did. Yeah. But here's the craziest part. Hey, man, this is the way of life. Oh, oh, absolutely. This yeah. is the way of life. And I don't, I don't sit around anymore and I, and I don't fear it. Um, and when you talk about uh, pride and you talk about all the stuff that we were talking about, I found this new confidence uh, where I walk in a room and I just own it immediately. Um, and it's a new way of thinking. My okay. confidence comes with the Lord. Every room I walk into, this meeting, I said, God, you go before me. Yeah. You take my tongue 
You take my mind, yep. you take my body. Yep. When you walk into a room and you have this type of faith, hypothetically, yep. say I'm an idiot. Yep. Say I am completely a nutcase. Yep. I guarantee you I, I outworked the old George yep. that didn't have that faith. Oh, absolutely. And you can also apply the same to fighting. Like if you look at the Islamic fighters, they say, oh, glory to God. God's already decided. I'm just going to go in there. They, they're, they're so calm. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and by the way, that's scary. It's dude. super scary. Yo, if you walk into a dude and he's just super calm, yeah, that's, it doesn't care. Fuck all that. I don't even want to be here anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. Like if, if I were to agree and if I were to do a fight now, I know that it's in God's hands. So I, I, I'd be as calm. I'd be nervous, of course, and I'd want to be nervous, but I'd know like, look, this is in God's hands. God's already decided. He, Allah is the best of planners. He will decide if I need to win and destroy this man or if I need to lose and learn a lesson. Then it's but up that's to God. working off of fear, not faith. Well, Faith is, uh, faith is so beautiful when you could use it, and fear is such a poison, bro. And I don't know if you've really hung out with people that have fear. It's, a, it's, a, it's an addictive personality. Oh, it's sticky. It's very sticky. Yeah. Very sticky. Have you ever watched something on TikTok or Instagram, and then all day you're just thinking about it, and you're like, this yeah. motherfucker can't leave my brain, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I am now limiting myself on what I'm absorbing. Bro, I don't talk. I want to make this very clear. I've... One of the best things about money is I've managed to create my reality absolutely. I don't talk to anyone I don't want to talk to. If you come to me and say, we can make $100 million, but I don't like your shirt, then you can get fucked. That's, that's <laughs> my life now. Because I don't need money and I don't like you. So I, that's who I am, right? So I've created my reality absolutely. And the number one thing I will not do is talk to negative people. I don't want to hear, I don't care what your story Poisonous. is. I don't care what happened. If all you do is complain, you are not around me. Because it is sticky. It's sticky to you. It's sticky to the universe. It leaves a residue. I don't want to hear it. Everyone around me is happy. And not only happy, we're the kind of people, if we're in a trench and we're getting shelled, we're laughing. Yep. We're like, missed. <laughs> That's who we are. Bro, they just hit me with the largest matrix attack on the planet. I should be destitute and disappeared. Here I am on your podcast. I just pulled up in a brand new sports car. I'm like a cockroach. And you drop the nuke to kill everyone. The cockroach crawls out with top G on the back. It's all a big, it's all hilarious, bro. It's a joke. Human trafficking for TikTok. The whole thing's a joke, but here I survive. So you have to be that person. And even my brother and I in jail, sometimes we just look at each other. We'd be sitting there in jail. And sometimes we just look at each other and just burst out laughing. Like this is so ridiculous. But I don't have have time for negative people and, and especially when negative people come out with their sub stories i guess i'm kind of fortunate that god has put me through so many difficult things when people tell me their sub stories i'm sitting there going is that it you're, you're a fuck up because of that you should have seen what i had to do like so i don't want to hear it i'm an interest in it and you're right you have to be careful who you're around because you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with 